Hey guys, and welcome to Bite Size Pictures. My name is Jennifer B. Ashley, and this is the show which supports, celebrates, and acknowledges awesome homegrown independent filmmakers, and of course, film-related practitioners as well. From behind the scenes footage, guest interviews, tech tips, to even what's trending on the indie scene, we at Bite Size Pictures have got you covered. We are so excited to share with all of you the beautifully rich and diverse film culture we have right here in Melbourne. Now today we have two very special guests joining us who have pretty awesome jobs. Basically, they amalgamate their love of photography, gadgets and technology and they put it all together. Any guesses? Well, I'm talking about drone cameras. Now drone cameras are actually unmanned aerial vehicles which utilise the latest in photographic and video camera technology. But what's super cool about these drones is they actually have the smooth manoeuvrability of like a helicopter. So in layman's terms, it's sort of like a remote controlled camera which has a bird's eye view of things. And it actually gets footage which say a dolly or a crane couldn't get for us. So let's go have a chat with the CEO of Coptercam and their Victorian branch manager, Jan Zaboa. Alrighty guys, it's time to get tech savvy. Now, hi Tran, you are the CEO of Coptercam. We actually do have a long list of qualifications and accreditations under your belt in like IT, training and assessment, things like that. So what brought you to actually be a part of UAV photography? I've been a private pilot for a number of years. Yeah. I've been flying model helicopters and model planes for about 20 years. I worked in IT for 10 years. Um, I guess when you put it all together, you get a flying computer that has a camera. Um, <laughs> and one day I was driving uh, in the car with my wife and I said to her, wouldn't it be cool if I strapped a camera to one of my model helicopters and took photos and sold it to real estate agents? How about you, Jan? So when it comes to this area, what sparked your interest? Um, well, I know Hi and uh, especially Glenn McGarry who uh, works in Sydney. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we started doing the Fox Copter, um, they needed, of course, somebody here in uh, Melbourne. Yeah. So yeah. Much, and I got involved that way and uh, they needed an operation here in Melbourne. So they asked me to get involved and uh, have a history in photography, was an engineer. Yeah. And uh, away it went. Away it went. History is history and history here you are now. There we are. That's fantastic. Yeah. Okay. So when it comes to the kind of things that these drones are capable of, um, let's talk about the kind of footage you guys get. What's the, what are they usually used for? Uh, real estate. Is, real estate, is, yeah. yeah. Everyone thinks of real estate. Mm -hmm. But we've been involved with you know, Channel 7, Channel 10, Fox Sports, getting all the sporting and like, documentary type work. Wow. Uh, we've been involved in short films, uh, feature films. Yeah. Um, you know, I think Jan's recently come back from a shoot with the ABC. Yep. Fantastic. And you have some Hollywood A-listers under your belts as well with like Sam Worthington and things like that. Yes, with, we, we, yeah. we recently shot a, a feature with Robert Connolly starring mm -hmm. Sam Worthington. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that film actually won the Cinefest Oz uh, prize, which was fantastic. Yeah. And it's a great children's film and it was involved paper planes, which is not too far off what we like doing. Yeah. This morning I had the luxury of having a live demonstration of the actual copter cams themselves. So what actual cameras do you use within the um, copter cams? We have a saying in copter cam, uh, there's, a, there's a good camera for every job. Yep. Uh, and it just depends on what the criteria are uh, for the client. Sure. Uh, they might want to come fly and say, so do you have a Canon 5D, but after we assess the situation, we might fly a GH4. Any camera that is out there, we could technically fly it as long as it's within the weight limit data. So when it comes to um, the actual aircraft technologies within the drones themselves, what makes it all fly? Like what's going on there? What's happening? Well, they, we have different types of drones for different types of purposes. Yep. But the, the main aircraft we use are what's called multi-copters. Yep. And, and they are um, essentially flying computer systems that control electric motors. Mm -hmm. and, and 400 times a second, they make calculations on increasing or decreasing motor thrust and torque yep. to provide control and stability to the aircraft. Wow. And so basically, it's a flying computer. It measures its position in relation to the earth and then makes calculations and corrections. Mm -hmm. And then we provide radio controls to the aircraft mm -hmm. to actually move it. Then that, that's the aspect that keeps it flying. Mm -hmm. Then the second part of the drone is the camera gimbal system, which we design here in, in Australia. Yeah. And it stabilizes the, the, the cameras or the aircraft's gimbal yeah. system. So when we're flying along, so the aircraft has to bank to the left to compensate for the wind. Mm -hmm. The camera holds level so you don't have a tilt on the horizon. Yeah. And the camera operators, I mean, I think Jan was demonstrating today. Yeah. Can you control the camera and mm -hmm. point it 
to where it needs to be pointed without the pilot affecting the, the shot. Is there a weight limit to the actual cameras themselves? Because you're doing aerial stuff, so what's the maximum? I suppose we want to keep it as light as possible. Yeah. Uh, but because we're probably one of the few operators in Australia who also manufacture our own drone, we don't just buy off the shelf drones yeah. from, from others. Yeah. We can customise our aircraft for the client's needs. So the more weight you carry yep. in, in camera, the less batteries you can carry. So there's, right. there's an optimal range. Yeah. And so it depends on the job. Yeah. And uh, if we carry a heavy camera, we just fly for a shorter period of time. Okay. Uh, but it depends on the client's requirements because obviously for us, it's about the end product. Yes. The end product is awesome footage. Mm -hmm. And the easier we can make it for the client to grade their footage, so by using cameras which are easily uh, matching their cameras, yeah. the less post-production they have to take, which means that they can spend a bit more time with us and get some more awesome aerials. Okay, so let's talk about the serious side of things for a few moments. When it comes to like the licensing and regulations, what do you actually need when it comes to UAV photography? You need uh, an operator certificate mm -hmm. as, a, as, a, as a business to run yeah. an aerial photography or a drone company, and then each pilot needs their own license. When they're approaching companies like Coptercam, what kind of questions should they be asking? Well, firstly, all companies need to be licensed to do what we do. So the, the operator certificate, is, is one thing that the filmmakers should definitely ask for a copy of, and the pilot license mm -hmm. is another, another thing. So without those two things, um, they're operating illegally. Uh, with that, because your license doesn't necessarily mean you can actually do it as well, because mm -hmm. insurance is a big issue. Okay. You know, so you get your license, and the first thing I found when I started the business three years ago was my insurance policy didn't actually cover your photography. Okay. There was an, ex there was an exclusion clause that virtually Every general insurance policy that I've seen yeah. has exclusion source says does not cover your photography. Wow. So then Wow. Yeah. So, so basically <laughs> you then have to go and get specialised aviation insurance, yeah. which can range anywhere between seven and a half thousand dollars per aircraft up to four and a half forty thousand dollars um, for doing wow. live sporting events. Yeah. Like well like we do with Fox Sports. So I guess if, if people are looking at hiring your photographers or aerial cinematographers, they probably want to ask. Can I have a copy of your insurance policy? Right. Because a lot of the times they don't, they, they're not covered. And if mm. the operator's not covered, potentially there's liability for the producers yeah. of the show. Because there's lots of things that come into play, obviously. Like you can't obviously go down to like the city centre areas and fly over people, things like that. So these, these insurance policies have to be in place, don't they? Yeah, so you see usually with very cheaper insurances that are out there and they're becoming cheaper now, mm -hmm. that there's usually a lot of clauses what you can and what you cannot do. Mm -hmm. So even though you get somebody who might be licensed and insured, he might have actually be doing work that he's not insured for. Ah. So that is another thing to check. Well, thank you gentlemen so much for being a part of Bite Size Pictures. I've learned so much today. I feel like I could even be an honorary pilot myself.